In this example here, we have a cost function for a company who produces backpacks. In this case right here, the cost in US dollars for producing X backpacks is calculated by negative 0.04 X squared plus 100 X plus 800. We're being asked in this case is first find the marginal and the average cost functions. The marginal and average cost functions, as you'll see, um, are very similar in some ways, but also very different. Um, they both will have the same units as cost per backpack, but the marginal cost function calculates the exact price of producing a certain backpack. So for instance, if we wanted to know, if we were to make 100 backpacks, what is the actual cost of that 100th backpack to cost uh, to create? The average cost function instead does this. It says, well, if you create 100 backpacks, you're going to take the cost, divide it by 100, and then we'll tell you, well, how much it costs on average to make those backpacks. There are a lot of concepts in here, like economies of scale and other economic factors that, that change the cost for companies. And I won't get into, into deep here. We might talk a little bit as we get some numbers in front of us. But generally speaking, the big concept would be something like a company creates, uh, has a workforce and has a, a big warehouse. Um, if they had this big warehouse and just weighed one backpack, it wouldn't be worth their money, right? As they maybe create more and more or produce more backpacks per day, the actual cost of each backpack would go down. That would be the concept of economies of scale. But let's not get too deep in the weeds with that stuff. That's for an economics class. Let's just deal with the mathematical application of this. First up, the marginal cost function. If we have a cost function, the first derivative is called the marginal cost function. This is very similar with a position function and the first derivative is always the velocity. If we have a cost, a revenue, or a profit function, the first derivative will always tell us the marginal profit, marginal cost, or marginal revenue. In this case right here, the first derivative of this function, we can just use the power rule on each of these terms. This first term, I bring the two down and multiply it by this negative uh, 0 0.04 to get negative 0 0.08, and then x to the one power now. And then the next term would be 100x, which would, uh, when we take the derivative, would just give us 100 there. The average cost function actually hasn't had anything to do specifically with calculus. The average cost function for any function like this is, is found by taking the original function and simply dividing it by x. And that should make sense, right? That's how we find the average of anything. We, we find the overall amount and then divide by how many of those we've created or produced. So in this case right here, we just take our original cost function. and we divide it by x. Before I move on to the second question and actually calculate for 500 backpacks, which I'm being asked for these two, I just wanna talk about the units. And again, this is the same thing as we've done previously. If our original function right here, input number of backpacks and output cost, then the first derivative here would have the units of the cost in dollars and then per backpack. Interestingly enough, the average cost function actually has exactly the same units, and you can see this pretty clearly. The way that we've defined the average cost function is we take the cost at a certain x value or a certain number of backpacks, and we divide it by the number of backpacks. So literally, by the way we've defined that, the units will be dollars divided by the number of backpacks, or dollars per backpack. All right, so then for number two, we're simply just being asked then to find the marginal and average cost of producing 500 backpacks. That would just mean we're gonna plug in a 500 to each of these functions separately. So first for the marginal cost, if we take our marginal cost function and we plug in, So for the second function here, we're simply being asked to calculate for both of these functions we've just found, what happens at 500 backpacks. And in this case, so for the marginal cost, we would have C prime of 500. If we plug 500 into this function right here, it gives us out 60. If we plug 500 into the average cost function right here, we end up with 81.6. Now, importantly, we need to understand what this means. In this case, again, these are both dollars per backpack. As I said in the beginning of this, this is the difference between these two statements. This first statement right here says that at 500 backpacks, the cost per backpack to make, the exact instantaneous cost at that point, is costing this company $60 to produce that backpack. 
The average cost function is doing a little bit different. What this is saying is this is taking the entire cost for producing 500 backpacks and divide by 500. You may be thinking, well, why, why are those numbers not the same? And just generally speaking, this is the idea of economies of scale. What this means is that cost for every backpack is going down as they make more backpacks. The 500th backpack does not cost this company as much as the 100th backpack or the 10th backpack. Finally, let's calculate the second derivative and try to describe what this means. In this case, so we have the first derivative right here. If we take the second derivative of the cost function, uh, we would just get, this is the only thing that produces anything, and we'll get negative 0.08. If we want to try to think about what it means, there's a couple of different ways of doing this, but first what I will always do is compute its units, which help me try to figure out what it represents. In this case, again, what we're going to do, the, this derivative is the rate of change of the derivative above. So we're going to get is the cost per backpack per backpack. Now, what does that even mean? Again, when we have these kind of nested rates like this, these complex fraction rates, it can be very difficult at times. We've already seen acceleration where we have the feet per second per second. And again, that was telling us every second how the velocity is changing. So conceptually, the same thing is going on here. If we try to read this, what is happening? Well, this is telling us the change of the cost per backpack for every backpack they make. What this is saying then is that they're saving as cost of making a backpack, generally, they're saving eight cents for the next backpack. So the next backpack they make will be eight cents cheaper than the previous backpack. That number makes sense with us when we were our previous problem we were working on, right? We found that the marginal cost of the 500th backpack was cheaper than the average cost for the first 500, meaning it must be getting cheaper as time goes on. Another way of thinking about this, just graphically or conceptually, is we look back at the first derivative, right? This is a, a function that outputs the cost per backpack. But if you look at the slope of this function, right? What this is saying generally is that when they produce zero backpacks or the first backpack, there's a general cost of $100. But for every backpack they make, it's going down by, the cost is going down by eight cents. So it starts at $100. Again, thinking kind of visually of the slope of this graph. It starts at $100, the cost to make a backpack, but then every backpack they make, it gets cheaper by eight cents.